But the the Kings thing is such a surprise. Nobody saw it coming. I remember how much we ridiculed them for giving up on Therese Halliburton and all of that last season. But they have made something out of themselves this year. Maybe a couple weeks ago, they got off to this great start. We thought they were a fluke. Then they dipped just a little bit. But things have settled just a little bit. And they're sitting right now at the fifth spot in the Western Conference. And they've been pretty – they've been playoff picture, playing picture the entirety of the season. Uh, Carl, off the top. Do you think they can keep – is this something that's sustainable? I know you said a couple weeks ago, and I know Blake said it too, a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago it wasn't really sustainable. At this point, the way things are looking now, is this something that they, they can sustain? You see, I'm kind of optimistic. Like, I don't really know if it's something they can sustain because if you look at the rest of the bottom half of the Western Conference, it's probably, what, separated by, what, two and a half, three games? It's mm-hmm. so like you could easily go on a two- or three-game losing streak and be, like, 10th probably, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So I don't I, I I don't I don't know how realist like realistically like they can really keep this up because like I said in the West, especially probably from I would say four to ten, like you can go on a losing losing streak and then find your ass at the bottom of the damn near at the bottom of the stands just like that. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be for real. It's gonna be interesting to see like as we get like further into the season, like are, are people gonna start drifting away? Because I don't know if I'm gonna be necessarily comfortable if, if I'm those teams being that damn close to other seedings. Yeah. That far late in the season because everybody goes on losing streaks. But to answer your question, um, I think they're going to drop eventually. I don't yeah. believe in them. I think they're going to drop because what are they? Fourteen to ten? Thirteen to ten? Thirteen to ten right now. Fourth place. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Only three games above five hundred is not like great. That's not a not a great thing. So I I, I really don't believe in them staying at that at that pace. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Blake, are you like how seriously are you taking this Sacramento thing? Because I remember one time I put in the group chat, I was like, we got to talk about this Kings thing, and I remember you were like, we ain't talking about them right now because this shit ain't going, this shit ain't going to keep going on, and it's still going on right now. So where are you at? Are you are you where Carl's at? Are you thinking this is something they can't sustain, or are you are you a little like optimistic they can kind of keep this going? Well, I'm looking at I'm looking at the uh, conference rankings right now, and I don't know, man. Uh, for one, there's a couple of teams under them that I can't see. They're kind of in a slump right now, but I can't see those teams, you know, being in, being in this slump forever. I think after a while, Sacramento is going to probably fall back down to earth. Um, I, I can just go off the top here. Dallas, I can see them moving up. Uh, Portland, yeah. I can maybe see them moving up. Uh, Clippers, of course, they'll move up. Golden State, they'll get it together. Um I hate to say it, but the way LA has been playing lately, they they may they may make a little bit of noise. But I, I, I'll ret- I'll retract on my earlier statement of saying the Kings won't make the playoffs because the Kings have actually been playing decent basketball. I think Kevin Herter is actually Kevin Herter is um he's like what top ten or top five in three point percentage so far this season, and during that uh, duo, De'Aaron Fox and uh, Sabonis has been pretty cool, but um. I do think that they're good enough to see, and not to mention coaching wise, Mike uh, Mike Burns, he's been doing a great job. But um, I do think that they'll probably they'll sneak into maybe maybe not a play. I think they'll they're almost guaranteed to sneak into a play in. But um, I think they can finish one through seven, or not one through seven, but seven maybe seven on up. I think they're good enough to do that. Yeah, and even if. They- like the, even if that's like the worst, thing, like if that's where they end up at, anything mm-hmm. better than what the hell's been happening in the last 20 years. You know what I'm saying? I, I think for yeah. them with Sacramento, we were just waiting to figure out what it was going to be like. I remember a year ago, we did a segment actually around this time last year on the Kings. And our whole question was crazy. We literally did a segment around this time last year on the Kings. And I remember thinking like, what where where is this team right now? You know what I'm saying? How how long is it gonna be till we move on from the De'Aaron Fox thing? You know, like I think at this point they still had Therese Halliburton. We were wondering why they were drafting so many guards and all of that. We just didn't yeah. know what the direction was. Marvin Bagley, I think, was still there on the roster. And we were just wondering where is this team at? Where are they going? And they go ahead and make this Halliburton trade, got shitted on for it, rightfully so at that time. You know, rightfully so, they got shitted on for it because we look what Halliburton turned out to be right now. He's, in my opinion, an MVP, top eight MVP candidate if he can keep these numbers up. But like I said, they've made something yep. out of themselves. The coaching changes everything. 
You know, Mike Brown brings a lot of energy to the table. De'Aaron Fox obviously is what he is. Sabonis, one of the most underrated bigs in the NBA that we've seen in a long time. He's the skill set, the things he does in the offensive end uh, are as good as a lot of other great bigs in this league. Um, we mentioned, you know, Keegan Murray being there. He hasn't been great over his last couple, but, you know, him coming into the game, you know, and the, being in the rotation, he's done a lot of great things. Malik Monk, a lot of, you mentioned, Blake mentioned Kevin yeah. Herter. And this team also has an identity. One thing they have maintained throughout yeah. the entire season is a high offensive rating, you know? So I, the, to answer my own question, like Blake said, or like Carl said, there are a lot of teams in the West that I just don't see staying this low, this long. Dallas is going to see a stride. Yeah, State's going to see a stride. LA, the Lakers are going to hopefully continue to ride whatever Portland. they are right now. Yeah. You try you to support yeah, but you, you try to the Clippers. Try, no, let's go back. You try to sneak Portland in there. Uh-huh. No. God, no. Portland, Portland dropped off heavy. Yes. No, but listen, Portland but Dame hasn't been playing heavy. in none of them games. True. Like none. True. Like, you play, I think you like, played last game, but yeah, true, true. But yeah, most of them games he just over the last week and a half to two weeks, he basically yeah, hasn't played in any of them. So once he fully comes back and is in the rotation, they're not going to be that low to me. And then okay. obviously you got the Clippers. I don't see the Clippers staying that low, but who knows the way Kawhi and Paul George kind of drift in and out of the lineup. So yeah, we'll see. That health thing for them, we talked about this a couple, probably like a week ago. That health thing for them is scary as shit. Cause I, it's, you don't, I, I don't even know if bullshit. I want to. Y'all don't know if I want to say they're going to hop back up because of that health, simply be, simply put. But, you know, anything like yeah. Blake said, even if they end up becoming a playing team, that's a success because anything's better than what the hell they've been doing the last couple of years. And now they know they have something to capitalize on. Like, let's say they end this season and they lose in the second round of the playing or maybe best case scenario, they go first round and lose in like five games. At least they know they have something that they can build off of. Because like I said, the issue with them was they were kind of in that box where we didn't know where they were at. We didn't know if they were rebuilding. We didn't know what they were trying to do. You know, now if they can keep this success going, you just know what you're going to build off of and what you're going to capitalize off of. And to y'all point, having Mike Brown there and the energy he brings and the experience the head coach, that's something they just didn't have before. And that may be the key. Yeah, Coaching yeah. changes are always the key a lot of times, so... You know, it definitely is because you always say sometimes, OK, do we really need to move off the players? Let's try to move off the coach first and then try to move off the players if that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But like the Timberwolves, I don't think they're I don't think probably a couple months from now, I don't know if they're going to be a better team than the Timberwolves. Yeah. To be honest, I just don't know. Now, the Timberwolves now, they have been a huge disappointment. And your boy Rudy Gobert has not played, you know, very good, like very well. And I've kind of predicted that because I don't think he's that good. But that's not the point. But I'm just saying, I don't know if they're going to be better than teams like that a couple months from now. Mm-hmm. That's up in the air, though, because because Minnesota ain't, is, it hasn't really been a good team. Like, they're 500 literally right now. They're 12 and 12. So we'll I'm see. A, but I'm a sidetrack a bit just to shit on Minnesota. But I, I looked at some of their numbers. They're literally not good at anything. Like there's not one thing they're good, and and you think like okay maybe their offense isn't that great. As many great options they have, they're not good at that. Yeah. Defensively, they're not good. They're just it's, not good. Side, so, that's total side. They suck right now. No, no, yeah, they, they definitely do. Defensive yeah. side is surprising, given that you have a, a perennial defensive player of the year contender on your team and another. I I I, I just don't get it, bro. I, I really don't. <clears throat> you know what it's time to do. I told. I pre- well, I didn't predict it. I kind of said something about in the summer. People probably call kind of call me crazy. I said I think you should explore like trading in quarantine, quarantine towns because like it's pro- like I don't know if you can go anywhere else with him because you had him on your team though you haven't had him on with uh with uh with I can't even think of his name. You had him with D'Angelo D'Angelo Russell for a while, but you haven't had him with uh damn and- uh, Anthony Edwards. My mm-hmm. yeah, my bad. You you haven't had him with Anthony Edwards a while, so it's like. I could kind of see why they're trying to hold off to see if they kind of mesh well together, but I don't think it's going to work to where they yeah. to take them where they need to go. If this season don't work, then he's out. And plus, I I don't know how I was feeling about the whole two seven footers on the floor, and I I like the two seven two centers on the floor thing in two thousand twenty two. I I didn't know how I felt. I don't care how versatile they are. I don't care. You you shouldn't have no seven footer just sitting out there on a three point line the whole game. And he's a center. We, we got two seven footers on the floor. Right but the, but difference between them is well, Evan Moby's as versatile as they're it more can. skilled. Yeah, yeah and they're skilled. way more skilled. Like in Jared Allen, in him and Rudy Gobert, the same player, but Jared Allen's still better than his yeah. ass. Jer- yeah, Rudy, Rudy 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 Gobert literally has no skill whatsoever. He yeah. relies on strictly off height. 
Yeah. And it's been times this year where his defense doesn't even look great to where he looks uncoordinated on the court. Mm -hmm. Perfect example is if you all watch the Golden State game when they play Golden State, that is like he really looked uncoordinated. Mm -hmm. Draymond Green was laughing at him. Yeah, I saw that shit. It's a joke. It's a joke. Like you can't be that damn big and just look like you don't know how to play basketball. It looked like he forgot how to play basketball. Yeah. I feel bad for that team because, uh, but at the same time, um, we're going to move from them in a second, but at the same time, I didn't really know what I expected from him at all. You know, like coming into it was such a, such a weird, he said it's nothing good. Yeah. Cause it was such a, such a weird situation. Uh, back to the Sacramento thing though. One thing I'm happy about is now De'Aaron Fox is having this opportunity. He never really had, and, you know, where he's mm-hmm. on a good team. And I know it's simple, but we're talking about a guy at the point guard position who's almost as talented as a lot of different players. You know, a lot like there are a lot of guys who we've just said are better players and not because of skill or not because of what he can do individually, you know, but they, they they had better team success. You know, it's for like the last couple of years, 17 points, 21 points, 25 point season, 23 point season, 23 point season. And the shooting numbers are efficient, you know, generally just generally not just three point shot shooting, but because those numbers haven't been great. But, you know, the field goal percentages are pretty high. The assist numbers are great. Like this is an efficient Super high skill point guard who the first what six five six years into his career, yeah five years into his career has just been putting up these numbers is getting nothing out of it. And so what we were scared of was we don't want to sit here and waste this dude's prime. Like I don't think there's another mm-hmm. point guard right now who's come in five years and has shown this elite skill and then has just hasn't been able to have anything happen around him. Usually I feel like teams figure out that type of stuff for their young point guards yeah. relatively early. It's been five years and nothing, you know, so yeah. now to see him in this position to where he's winning, it, it, you know, obviously not getting national TV playing time and all of that. But I like that he's in a situation to where he's showing that he can do this on a winning team. And I never doubted it. But a lot of times when we see these guys put we talked about it last episode with SGA, a lot of times with these young players, when they're putting up these numbers or whatever, they're showing off the skill set. We're like, but yeah, can they do it when their team's good? And so to see that De'Aaron Fox is proving it, it's not yeah. his best statistical season, but I love seeing this form, especially as a Kentucky point guard. So. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. That's I was going to ask you. Uh, yeah. Oh, my bad. Oh, no, I was just saying, especially since he got uh, Malik with him too. Yeah. Um, I'm, to see Malik Monk for yeah. too, especially that, that backcourt. Yeah, no, yeah. the Lakers should have never let him go. I was actually mad when the Lakers let him go. Hey, y'all but got I'm going to y'all got Lonnie Walker, he's better than him. You think Lonnie Walker better than uh oh, yeah. Malik? I think Lonnie Walker he played, he played defense. Yeah, he's he's better for the Lakers. I'm not saying he's better than Malik, but he's better for the Lakers than Malik was. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm gonna name off the next like probably five or six games, or even more if you all want me to uh, games for the Kings, and you tell me if you think they're gonna win. So next they play the uh Cavs. That mm-hmm. win, I won't. Next day, oh, huh? yeah, yeah, it, it'd be. I think it'd be a tough game to me think. But then next after that, they play the Knicks. So that's, that's a win. win. Yeah, and then after that, they play the 76ers. That's a toss up. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I, I don't really know like the health. The health. Yeah. Level of the 76ers is very, very inconsistent. Now versus the Raptors, I think they're gonna lose. Mm-hmm. So and then you got the Pistons. That's an easy win. You got the Hornets. That's another easy win. Then you got the Lakers. And to your point, their thing is they're just continuing to prove that they can beat these good teams. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about games against, you know, the Lakers or whatever. You're talking about games against, I forgot a couple of other teams that you mentioned there. Um, yeah, the Knicks are going to be a competitive game even. But showing that you can win against quality teams for this type of squad is huge. You know, because what you want to do now is you want to prove that, that the success is legit, that this isn't just a fluke or whatever. So I hope yeah. they can keep it moving. This team's not going to get anywhere deep or not, nothing like monumental is going to happen, for one, because they just don't play defense, you know. But at the same time, anything around playoffs or playing for this team is great for them because, like I said, some teams just need to know what direction it is that they're going yeah. in. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying, if they can win and get, the, get a winning season out of this – at least we know they're going to build around the, the Aaron Fox or, or, or and Sabonis thing. Because if this isn't happening, let's say they're like bottom of the West or whatever at this point, you know, in the alternate universe or what the fuck ever. Then at, if the season ends like that for them, the Aaron Fox is out. We talk about trading the Aaron Fox. Yeah. Our trade rumors become even stronger. So now they know where they want to go. They're not just getting stuck in this cycle of rebuild, kind of like how Philly was, you know, since 2013. Yeah. So, Yeah, I don't know if you think they – uh, make it to that position to where they might think they want to trade De'Aaron Fox. You think they're going to regret or trading uh, Tyrese Halliburton? Yeah. Over him? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the question I think about. If they get to that point where they're trade where they're trading their best player, because because obviously it might not be working like how they thought it would. Mm -hmm. You think they made a mistake, or do you think they're going to think we made a mistake? I guess. If, if this like season that. doesn't end up as a success, that if this season does not end up as a success, then there's not going to be a franchise mistake they'll regret more than than the Therese Halliburton trade. Yeah. There's not going to be a franchise. There's there's not going to be a uh, a thing they look back at and be more disappointed at than the Tyrese Halliburton trade if this season doesn't end up being a success when it's all said and done. Because the yeah. shit Tyrese Halliburton is doing right now, and I said it last episode, the man's leading Indiana. They're not just a good team. They're top in the East as a rebuilding team, and he's averaging 19 yeah. and 10. So, yeah, they don't make a success out of this yeah. season. Hell, yeah, they finna feel that shit. Yeah, Pacers, Pacers say, 13, say, and 13 and 12. I say success for them is probably just getting to the playoffs, to be honest with you. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the bar right now, especially for so many years of mediocrity. That's, that's about all you can ask for. Just get to the playoffs, and then we'll just build off of what we did. Isn't it? Yeah, hell yeah. This <laughs> man just, yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. like I said, it just, it just gives them something to look at. You know, like I said, do you, like right now with my Wizards, like the, the, we're 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 in a position. I don't give a damn what the record is right now. You just don't you don't know what these next couple of years are going to look like because you don't know what you're going to be building off of or building around. Some teams just needed that direction. I so don't. The and Sacramento is getting that. You know, right now the Wizards are yeah we're eleventh. Yeah, bro. We, well, yeah. I don't know what I would love to just be in a GM meeting. Uh, hey. Front office but, meeting uh, in Washington just to see what they trying to do. Yeah, but, but I mean, you all you all are only a half a game back of the play in. I don't really care because, like I said, it's just for them. It's like, what are we? Why, we yeah, have. I, yeah, I don't even. I'm gonna be honest. First of all, I I like the idea of the play in, but I don't love it because you give teams as like very mediocre chances to have hope, and I hate that. Yeah, I'm we, just we, saying we, that. bro, we've been saying this since like, dude, we've been saying this since they first announced the rule. You just celebrate mediocre. But at the same That's time, what it is. Want to see it. but at the same time, would you want to see a shit ton of teams tanking? No. But I also the, but 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 to me, obviously, them bottom tier teams aren't going to have a chance to win anything. Like most of the teams that we've seen win the play in, most of them have still been the seven and eight seeds. Like mm -hmm. I think it's rare, like the nine to ten have won. The only ones was the Wizards, I think. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was the only one. Considering that, I'm like it's pointless then because obviously these nine to ten teams don't really put up competition to the seven yeah. and eights. Yeah, I think I, I think I say this. It's about weighing issues. I can tolerate the playing more. First of all, it's more basketball. I'll tolerate that over watching a bunch of motherfuckers tank. That shit was trash to see. Okay. I said, even though some of some of these playing games have been terrible, like yeah. thirty point blowouts. Yeah, true. A couple that of them been good. Only a couple of them been good, like the Lakers one I could think of with the Warriors, and then obviously the Memphis versus Warriors. But those like the only two games that I can remember off the dome. Yeah. And any game, any playing game Charlotte was involved in over the last two years was a fucking oh, shit. Yeah. They suck. Or or Indiana. Indiana had some stinkers. Too. Yeah, Indiana had a lot of stinkers. So you said something about a nine, ten, uh, actually making the playoffs, and it was the Wizards, and it was. I, I'm pretty. Sh I'm pretty sure it was the Wizards. No, that was the it only team. was, and it was Russell Westbrook, and uh, yeah, just just throwing that back out there, just throwing that back out there. Look at look at Russ. Yeah, Crazy man. Russ. Shout yeah. out to Russ. But yeah, like I said, it's great for Sacramento. Ain't that something? Yeah, I don't even know if that's still a, is that still a thing right now. I mean, there are guys who have more better a better six man of the year case than Russ right now. I don't even know. I, I feel like that faded off real quick, but at least they're winning. So fuck it. Um, yeah. but yeah, and, and we you mentioned it very briefly, Carl. But the coaching thing, we don't realize if, if you don't realize now how much those coaching adjustments, how much of a change those coaching adjustments can make, then. I mean, we're looking at it. These coaches are coming in and just totally changing shit. South Boston, same way. I mean, it's different right now with Joe Mazzulli and the Ime Udoka thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, these coaches are coming in, they're just totally changing stuff up immediately. Yep. So I yep. think, and, that, and it shows you how important culture changes are. It, it really does. So that's another great point at the Sacramento thing is sometimes it could just take a coach kind of makes you wonder, did Utah need to move that far away from the Mitchell thing or did they just need to just try a different coach? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I heard somebody, I saw somebody say that in the comments the other day. I mean, they're good. They're all right. They're not going to be all right for a minute for a long time. They're not going to be all right. I, I think that's just going to come to an end, yeah. but yeah. it's already started to, they yeah, didn't, they it is starting to fall apart, but it's not, sometimes it may not always be, we need to make a million moves. Sometimes it could just be make a culture change and see what happens. If that don't work, then start.